Whoever fights monsters should see to it that in the process he does not become a monster. And if you gaze long enough into an abyss, the abyss will gaze back into you. The author of this prophecy in the mid-19th century was Friedrich Nietzsche, a German sage who created a new philosophy of the future. Unfortunately, the future turned out to be more terrifying than any prophecies. The cult of the great victory in World War II in Russia has long since turned into a true victory hysteria. The old war reigned everywhere in films, books, music and television. This victory hysteria became more important than other public and family holidays. Victory Day in Russia has long become a day of confrontation with the West. All the war horrors were attributed to Ukrainians. A new slogan, if necessary we will do it again, demanded a way out. A new war has begun. Russist, this is already a term used by scientists, copied the Nazis and everything. Loud parades, total militarization and bombing a peaceful cities, torture and murder in the occupied territories. And the same thesis are used as excuses. You are fighting for our motherland, so that no one forgets the lessons of World War II, so that there is no place in the world for executioners, punishers and Nazis. Fascists of the future will call themselves anti-fascists. This phrase of the US Senator Huey Long is increasingly mentioned when talking about Russia today, and its leaders is increasingly portrayed as Hitler. We will strive for the demilitarization and denazification of Ukraine. The term denazification emerged in 1945 during the Potsdam Conference. The victorious countries decided to rid the world of any Nazi ideology, manifestations forever. 17 years have passed and Russian troops invaded Ukraine under the slogans of fighting the Nazis. All those who did not welcome the occupiers with open arms were declared Nazis. In the summer of 2022, the New York Times published the results of an analysis of the Russian mass media conducted by Semantic Visions company. After researching 8 million articles, they find out that while the Nazism in Ukraine was hardly mentioned in Russia media before the full invasion, since February 24th over 2,000 such materials appeared every day. At the same time, Signal Labs researchers recorded a surge in references to Nazism in tweets, blogs and comments written in Russian language. After February 21st, the world was shocked by the Russians' treachery and cruelty. Previously, the West refused to believe in the growing threat. Putin was treated with persuasion attempts and appeasement. But the attack on Ukraine exposed his true essence. Now, the entire world sees clearly what Putin and his Kremlin, and, and his Kremlin allies are really all about. This was never about a genuine security concerns on their part. It was always about naked aggression, about Putin's desire for empire by any means necessary, by bullying Russia's neighbors through coercion and corruption, by changing borders by force, and ultimately by choosing a war without a cause. In 2005, Putin expressed his clear position regarding the collapse of the Soviet Union. This is the biggest geopolitical catastrophe of the 20th century. After all, Russia had lost 40% of its territories, population and industrial capacity. Putin hoped that by installing his president, he would get Ukraine in his pocket. His plan failed. Putin has a hostile attitude towards Ukraine, perceiving it negatively as an enemy, a personal one too. Since long ago, in fact, since 2004, when Ukrainian society slapped him with its choice, and this was very humiliating for Putin. Back then, Putin congratulated Yanukovych on his victory twice, but Ukrainians elected Viktor Yushchenko as their president. He is a very spiteful person. 
so he remembered that and then used every opportunity to demonstrate his intentions to take revenge on Ukraine. One of the ways to take revenge was to call Ukraine an artificial state. In 2005, Putin called the collapse of the USSR the greatest catastrophe of the 20th century. Without Ukraine, Russia was no longer a Eurasian empire. That's exactly in 2005, after the Ukrainian Maidan, when Putin got scared that this would become an example for Russians and he would lose his power. In 2008, Ukraine supported Georgia and demonstrated that the Russian army was weak. In 2012, Putin set a goal of modernizing the army. This was supposed to happen by 2022. Comrades, we all stand together to guard Germany. We must continue to defend our motherland. This is footage from distant 1934. Hitler is forming the opinion among Germans about their uniqueness and about the external enemy, which seems to threaten them and which absolutely must be destroyed. This is our present. Another dictator explains in almost the same terms why the Russian military should attack a neighboring peaceful Ukraine. Today events are not about the desire to infringe upon the interest of Ukraine and the Ukrainian people. They are about protecting Russia itself from those who took Ukraine hostage and are trying to use it against our country and people. I repeat, our actions are self-defense against the threats posed to us and from an even greater disaster than the one that is happening today. The thesis about Russia as an innocent victim which has to defend itself, it has immediately become one of the main Russian propaganda narratives. Surprisingly, they managed to link this postulate with myths about world's second army and threats to use nuclear weapons. Everybody who doesn't believe their propaganda are enemies. The Russian version of fascism does not allow pluralism of opinions. Such dogmacy is very typical for Russia. The stronger people should rule, not mix with the weaker ones. Hitler screamed from a tribune at one time. According to the misanthropic ideology, a number of nationalities were recognized as Untermenschen, lower people, and condemned to extinction. Thus, the genocide of the Jews began. More than 6 million people were killed in Ukraine during World War II. What the Nazis did to the Jewish people, what they did was terrible, it is impossible to say. I am a child born after this war, a long time after this war, but my parents suffered specifically. My grandparents were in the concentration camp in Auschwitz. My mother had three sisters, they were killed. My father had two brothers, they were killed. We didn't even have time to see them, they didn't know each other. My great-grandfather with his wife, all his children too, they were burned. They were put in the house, a wooden house, and this whole house was burned down. Eighty years later, the world was horrified to see the crimes of the Russian occupiers in Bucha, Hostomel, Irpin and Izum. The more settlements are liberated by the Ukrainian military, the more law enforcement agencies recorded the crimes of the Russians, mass graves, torture camps, destroyed schools and hospitals. In the 1930s, got wired a time machine to Putin's Russia, he would recognize fascism easily. Both the death symbol and marches, propaganda, mass graves with executed Ukrainians. Timothy Snyder, a philosopher and historian, wrote. Those who celebrated the victory over the Nazis so loudly adopted their criminal methods decades later. They just don't make soap from people, they don't make lampshades from skin. But the principle is the same. Camps where people are gathered to be killed, deportations, burned cities and villages, completely destroyed, nothing remains alive after racism. Terror, mass graves, torture chambers, abuse of still alive people and the boundless, undisguised hate with which they justify the war that they have started. 
The world saw the true face of the Russian world when the soldiers of so-called World Second Army heroically dragged toilets bowls, sports suits and washing machines from Ukraine. In the Zaporizhia region, Russia destroyed the Vasiliev Historical and Architectural Popov's Homestead Museum. One of the trophies of the occupiers was Count Popov's marble toilet bowl, which was put on display. It is interesting that Russians adhere to some cultural traditions. For the first time, this item was stolen by the Bolsheviks at the beginning of the last century. Wives of looters turned out to be no less cultured. Intercepted telephone conversations are shocking. You go ahead, rape Ukrainian women, just don't tell me the details. <laughs> A mixture of ghostly theories and ideas became the basis of a racist ideology that justifies the admissibility of any arbitrariness. It was at the FSB that they invented a technique called Nazism for Expert. But I want to tell you one more subtle point that Ukrainians should know. Russian intelligence services, and I know this too, Nazi activists work on two fronts. They also sent Russian Nazis to Ukraine under the guise of friends of Ukraine. They lie all the time that there is a Nazi regime in Ukraine, that the Nazis are running among there. But the Ukrainian Nazis were not enough, and they needed to visualize the image of the Nazis. Thus. Russian propaganda received means and the opportunity to create videos with allegedly Ukrainian Nazis, whose bodies were covered from top to bottom with the corresponding symbols. Moreover, the resources for such an export were plentiful. With the beginning of years 2000s, the Nazi movement in Russia flourished. Nazi skinheads killed people in Moscow simply because of the wrong from their point of view. Skin color for the color of the eyes. Various people were killed, some chess players, Dagestani workers, and all this was done with the conveyance of the FSB. Why? Because the FSB had the task of channeling such passionate, aggressive use. The aggression the hatred, cruelty, violence in a way that is safe for the authorities. So that they did not encroach on Abramovich and Deripaska, but encroach on some unfortunate Tajik janitors. Russian propaganda deliberately confused its consumers. Those who are called nationalists all over the world, in Ukraine it renamed as Nazis. In almost all European countries, the percentage of the nationalist-minded citizens is several times higher than the percentage of nationalists in Ukraine. It is enough to compare 2-2.5% of supporters of nationalism in Ukraine with 10-12% in many European countries and an even higher percentage in France. In particular, in the 2022 elections, Emmanuel Macron received 58.54% of the vote and Marie Le Pen 41.46%. However, since February 24, 2022, the percentage of the nationalists in Ukraine has somewhat increased as a result of the crime of genocide against Ukrainian people by the Russian Federation. These marks, V and Z, received a great resonance in the Russian information space and became first an unofficial and later official symbol of support for the invasion. What exactly they mean, even the Russian Ministry of Defense does not know for certain. Some ironically recall the American horror series Nation of Death, which was released in September 2014. It talked about the zombies virus destroyed the United States. The reality of today is different. The virus of Russism has infected 140 million Russians and now they are threatening humanity. The people of the former, present and future Soviet Union are sick with Russism, a very dangerous, serious chronic disease. Russism is worse than fascism, Nazism, racism, all misanthropic ideologies, whether they like it or not. And this terrible ailment probably can only be cured by the most severe test. Possibly the only people on earth who do not believe in anything at all, soulless, immoral and backward from the level of human development, hopelessly and for a long time are the Russians. 27 years have passed, and another president, the sixth 
President Volodymyr Zelensky. The world must understand, it must know the truth. There is a colonial war going on on our territory. It is the same as Nazism, as racism, and there is another new world. Russism. It believes that only one race exists. It is a big mistake, a tragedy that was under Nazism, one Aryan nation and no one else. The same thing is happening with Russism. There is a Russian world, they call it that. They do not respect us, do not respect our people, our territories. They believe that we do not exist, 40 million people. Putin never hit his position. So when five years ago the American director Oliver Stone, the same one who previously shot the film Natural Born Killers, interviewed Vladimir Putin, he frankly told him. For example, I believe that Russians and Ukrainians are generally one people. Two countries, one people? Well, in fact, it's one nation. Look, when these lands, which are the core of Ukraine, joined Russia, these are only three regions – Kyiv, Kyiv region, northern regions and south. No one considered themselves anything other than Russian. In this film interview, Putin stressed that reapproachment between Russia and Ukraine is inevitable. Not the development of the own country, economy, improvement of living standard of the population, development of the national culture, but the destruction of everything that is not Russian from their point of view. What is not amenable to Russification, what is superior in development, professes universal human values, what they in fact deny. On May 25, 1926, Simon Pitlura, the leader of the Ukrainian liberation movement, was killed in Paris. The preparation of the terrorist attack was carried out by the NKVD. On October 15, 1959, in Munich, the KGB agent killed Stepan Bandera. On March 25, 1999, Vyacheslav Chernovil, the leader of the People's Movement of Ukraine, Ruch, died. There is a version that this did not happen without FSB. The objectionable one were simply killed, history was rewritten, and the important facts were hidden. In this sense, indicative is the case that occurred after Ukraine's declaration of independence in August 1991, when Ukrainian diplomats in 1991 appealed to UN Secretary General Boutros Kelly with a statement that Ukraine had become independent. He was surprised to answer that, as founding member of the UN, Ukraine has been independent since 1945. So, de facto, we have been independent since 1945, de jure since 1991, and now, in 2022, we are fighting back the Russian world again. These are Russian people possessed by a demon, and we are not going to kill them, but we want them to change their mind. But if you don't want us to persuade you, we will kill you. We will kill as many as we need, a million, five, even if we exterminate everyone. Here they are, the consequences of Putin's stories about the rampage of Nazism in Ukraine. To kill everyone, by the millions, because Ukrainians are different. In our country, the idea of power is connected with the idea of freedom and dignity of the people. And even some Ukrainian thinkers criticized the Ukrainian people for this, especially in the 19th century. They wrote that in our country the idea of freedom prevails over the idea of statehood. It seems to me that it distinguishes the Ukrainian people from the Russians, two different mentalities. Unlike Russians, self-organization has always been characteristic for Ukrainians. It had a vivid manifestation in the Cossack era and also in modern history. We saw it during two uprisings of Maidan and now our ability to self-organize help us to defend our land and to repel full-scale aggression of the Russian Federation.
Putin's Russia perceives Ukraine as the key, the greatest threat to its existence. And now with this war it is. Either there will be no Ukraine or no Russia in its current form. Now that's the case, although back in 2014 it was different. Therefore, the goal of this war is extermination of Ukrainianness in any way, either physically, which means the physical extermination of the population, or psychological destruction of the identity. For Ukrainians, Ukraine identity feels separate. Nowadays, the words of Johar Dudayev, which he said back in 1995, are often recalled. General Dudayo was a high-class pilot and a very fair person. He studied the psychology of Ukrainians well because during the Soviet times he served for three years in the Ukrainian Republic as the chief of staff of the Bomber Division. Slavization, which is unification of Slavs. Nothing will come out of this either, since the main component of Slavization, Ukrainians, will never put up with Russification. On November 1, 1991, Dudaev himself signed the Act of Independence of the Chechen Republic of Ichkeria. Russia, then ruled by Yeltsin, would not accept this. The First and Second Chechen Wars took thousands of lives of peaceful Chechens. Russians destroyed entire villages. One of the local residents was beheaded and his head was boiled in an aluminum bucket. Russian soldiers cut off the ears of Chechens with the words I will bring it home. They raped women and children, took pictures with those killed as a keepsake. The order to murder Major General of Aviation, President of the Chechen Republic Ichkeria Johar Dudayev, was personally signed by the President of the Russian Federation, Boris Yeltsin. And he was very happy when Dudayev was killed. This happened in April 1996. Dudayev's satellite phone was geolocated by the FSB. Two planes instantly took to the sky and launched missiles at the target. Many people received orders and medals after that. So Putin had someone to learn from to destroy enemies. On October 18, 2022, deputies of the Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine recognized each area as a temporarily occupied by Russia and condemned the genocide of the Chechen people. In general, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, Russia conducted about a dozen of military special operations, armed conflict in Transnistria, South Ossetian war, supporting the war between Georgia and South Ossetia, war in Abkhazia, two wars in Chechnya and war with Georgia. The history of modern Russia is blood, terror and violence. Political scientists say that Russia used the salami method. In order not to incur harsh international sanctions, Russians gradually seized foreign territories. Imperial ambitions first of all. At the same time, Russians were fed the myth of their country's imperial greatness for years. Psychologists call this technique narcissistic seduction. When people feel an excessive uplift because of the thought that they belong to a great nation, a great power, all this can be called narcissistic seduction. When the idea of their self-importance and self-value gets raised, moreover, for an entire group of people, it deeply touches their feelings. That is why those ideas spread so easily and do not even require special propaganda efforts to give them life. They continue in the dynamics of public consciousness, public opinion. The authorities actively fed the people with fables about the greatness of their own nation, because they could not offer anything else, and were not even going to. The poverty and criminal reality that ruled just outside of the Russian capital center were compensated for with cheap alcohol and cruelty. It's unbelievable, but in 2017, punishment for domestic violence was abolished in Russia. 
Instead of building a modern, civilized state and society, and for this there were both financial and economic opportunities, the Russian elite is trying not even to revert the society from barbaric times to the present, but rather to keep the population in a state of barbarism. The propaganda machine continues to work. Footage from an upcoming film about the events in Ukraine has recently hit the internet. It is filmed by Russian so-called artists. In a frame, Ukrainian prisoners are stripped so that tattoos with Nazi symbols can be seen. In this way, Russians get distracted from the news about the crimes of their military, which pop on social networks from time to time. They are given the illusion of a black and white world, in which there are bad Nazis and a majestic good nation, a nation that has a moral right to everything. In a society suffering from an inferiority complex, fascism is a medicine of some kind. Because it makes being born in that particular country the main reason for pride, a characteristic of almost everyone. The idea of patriotism works effectively only in the presence of external enemies, without whom patriotism loses all meaning. That is why fascism is based on obsession with the idea of a conspiracy. People must feel that they are trapped in a hostile ring. Fascism, Nazism, Russism – it's all evil only with different faces. The main postulate of the ideology of fascism was the exclusive role of the state in the revival of the glory of ancient Rome. For the ideology of Nazism, the idea of racial superiority of the German nation was important. Comrades, we all stand guard over Germany together. We must continue to defend our homeland. In fact, Putin's regime operates on the principle of Nazi Germany. One people, one state, one leader. Russia is only formally a federation. In fact, this is an empire led by a dictator who has been in power for 22 years. All this time there is a total denazification of people. In other words, other nationalities in Russia do not survive. They are losing their national identity. For example, official Russian data on the number of Ukrainians in Russian Federation in 1989 4.4 million, in 2002 2.9 million, in 2010 1.9 million. Russification is inevitable in the conditions of almost complete absence of schools and media in the languages of national minorities, socio-political organizations, national culture centers. Ukraine continues the war for its freedom and independence. We don't have Nazis. Jews are not afraid to come to us even in the midst of the war. I will not only say what I think, but I will say what I know. There is no Nazism in Ukraine. As a Nazism, there are unfortunately some phenomena like anti-Semitism. But there is a very, very little of this, thanks God, the least. In Europe, such situations occur. They are single situations, such as there were a year ago, but today there are definitely none. During this special operation, it made us in contrary united with the whole all people of Ukraine, Jews, Muslims, Christians, we all love each other and respect each other and fight against our enemies. The world has known a lot of dictators. All of them were completely different, but the end of their life is almost the same. Yes, the author of Italian fascism, Benito Mussolini, was shot by Italian communists while trying to escape from Italy. The next day, his corpse was hung in the main square of Milan. As you know, having lost the war, Adolf Hitler shot himself. Other Nazis were tried by an international tribunal known as the Nuremberg Trials. How will the fate of dictator Putin turn out? Perhaps he will die due to illness, or perhaps his own comrades will kill him. Of course, Ukrainians and other peoples affected by Russism would prefer to see him being tried in court. The finale of the war unleashed by Russia will be an international tribunal. 
This is important not only to punish the aggressor, but also to create a reliable system of protecting the world from the encroachments of any desolate and insane dictators, so that Auschwitz, Majdanek, Bucha, Hostomel, Mariupol, Izum will never happen again.